वेलकम टू बुनियाद पॉडकास्ट बाय डॉक्टर मोनिका नागपाल वी डिड नॉट इनहेरिट दिस वर्ल्ड लाइक दिस देन हाउ कैन वी गिव दिस टू आर नेक्स्ट जनरेशन इन दिस फॉर्म वी नीड टू रिफ्लेक्ट माइंडफुली ऑन आर कोर वैल्यूज एंड मेक कॉन्शियस एफर्ट्स टूवर्ड्स प्रोटेक्टिंग द प्लान एंड ऑल्सो अचीव ऑल सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट गोल्स with bunyad i monica nagpal will bring to fore sustainability champions who are striving to bring back harmony with the nature and also dignity of each life namaskar dosto again we are here with another episode for bunyad laying the foundation of sustainable living and today we have a wonderful guest with us kriti Thank you so much, Monica. Uh, my name is Kriti, and I run Kari by Kriti. We are a home decor and furnishings company based out of uh, Hyderabad. We are an e-commerce setup, and I work with traditional art forms and traditional techniques to create uh, modern products for global homes. So that's so wonderful. She has introduced herself. so beautifully because she makes such products which are so beautiful but before we delve into the sustainable aspect of her work i will really ask her to introduce her professional journey with us so i uh, i have an education in textiles i studied home science uh, for my graduation and one of the subjects was te- textile so i was always very intrigued and interested in how uh, you know textiles was formed then the journey of creating textiles and the different types of you know fabrics that we have the fibers that we have and then to pursue this further i did my post graduation from pearl academy in new delhi uh, in apparel management post that i was working with a number of buying houses and an export house in uh, gurgaon and in one of these buying houses i i had the opportunity to work with block printers so uh, and these were uh, block printers in jaipur and it was really fascinating to see how they would convert a piece of wood and create a design on it and then carve the design and then you know stamp uh, fabric with yes, uh, yes. with the colors and um, with those uh, stamps and uh, it was really again very fascinating um post my job uh, i had the opportunity to travel to kutch Um, you know, in Gujarat one time. Uh, this was in 2012, and uh, I went there with my friends and uh, with no ex- expectations really. But then what I realized was that in the in the midst of the desert, uh, these uh, you know women in Kutch they were actually creating these really beautiful, uh, uh, you know, they were creating their own clothes yeah. with uh, thread work, right. mirror work, and beads and things like that. And it was really fascinating once again. so that is when i really wanted to do something that would bring these art forms forward yeah. you know and uh, just not uh, just ha- make sure that they get the exposure that that is due to them yes absolutely so uh, i would just uh, when you talking about those blocks i remember the school incidents when we were young we were given uh, to make blocks on that potato no you yeah, remember yeah. on potatoes and bindi oh and bindi also ladies finger we used to make those blocks and we used to do and now the children are using their hands the fingerprints everything Absolutely. becomes a block and people are so these are very really ingrained in all of us so all of these forms are already ingrained in us but how we are neglecting them for those prints so we are becoming so digital that we are wearing digital prints all over our body <laughs> and we uh, we are going towards the technologies but here she is uh, trying to bring out this uh, long lost kind of a you can say form of clothing which is which lost that art is lost and she is one of them i mean there there are so many women who are really doing this but now that we are talking to her i mean know how or what all goes into actually bringing and helping the women who are there when she's talking about kutch deep down she found 
and now I can also understand why we have such vibrant colors coming from all of the Rajasthan and Gujarat because it is so dry there. Absolutely. No, it is all the yeah. sand, no, which all is so sand. dry. And dry, arid, there's no lush greenery, you know, there's yes. nothing that will soothe your eyes really. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So it is so natural for those women to wear those colorful clothes mm -hmm. and that is how they are giving us this beautiful art. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, so I also wanted to share that uh, along with you know block print and catch work, I also work with uh, a women's group in Odisha, mm -hmm. which creates uh, you know the uh, what the ladies do is that their normal everyday work is actually uh, agriculture, mm -hmm. but during uh, you know the monsoon time when they're not able to work in the fields, mm -hmm. they actually use dry sabai grass, okay, uh, which is uh, you know grass which dries in the summer and uh, they create baskets wow. along with thread. Mm. So these baskets are really beautiful, um, you know, we give them our designs, we give them our colors and they're actually able to create this in rural uh, Odisha. Wow. So this is also one of the art forms that we are kind of uh, bringing out. Yes. Wonderful, wonderful. So what I'm telling the audience is we are not here only to talk about bringing the woman out but more importantly is what she's doing is she's getting to bring the art with the women. No, it is not about that men are not doing so much, but yes. wherever they are doing, they are doing. But they are able to have that kind of an exposure which they have because it is so natural. Only yesterday when I was thinking on some lines and we had a talk on something and uh, every woman I talk that she, she says I, I got support from my family. Absolutely. But I have never heard of a man speaking like that. No? <laughs> Aren't we not supporting our men? But no man will speak that I got my support from the family and that is why I'm doing what I'm doing. So it is an extraordinary thing for a woman to go out and because she gets the support, only then she is supposed to go out. But then when we have a woman who is supporting the woman to really come out, that is more wonderful. Absolutely. Right? So today we are speaking more about how a woman is working for a woman. So sustainable development goal number five is our focus. And of course we are also going to focus on number eight which is regarding the decent work environment which she is also able to provide to her uh, woman uh, colleagues or workers which are working for her uh, project. Yes. So let us now understand that how did this woman orientation came into your life? So, uh, I am very conscious about my privileged background. You know, I grew up in a privileged background. And because of that, I feel that somewhere I have the responsibility to make sure that women around me or women in my society also have the ability to earn for themselves, yes. earn a decent livelihood, to raise their children in a better environment. Absolutely. You know. So, uh, I think I, I have always been very conscious. Ever since I was very little, my mother has really ingrained in us that you know, that our father works so hard to make sure that we are uh, provided with whatever we want. And uh, that is something that is, uh, you know, an instinct of a parent. Yes. So I, I feel that uh, all of us women have that towards our children. You yes, know, yes. To make sure that they are doing better or they are getting better than what we did. Yeah. So um, when I started uh, this work, I wanted to make sure that I work uh, that my work is about creating some sort of, uh, you know, that uh, it creates an impact, mm -hmm. really. And uh, just by going to a factory and uh, uh, purchasing something or getting something made for them was not enough for me. Mm -hmm. I felt that I wanted somewhere where I can really, uh, you know, single-handedly or uh, I, my work can create impact. Yes. It wasn't about uh, buying and selling. Yes. You know, just yeah. that. So um, in 2013 when my husband and I moved back from Australia to Hyderabad, I did not find a job, uh, a textiles job. So I thought that this was really my opportunity to start something or to do something. Yeah. And uh, that is when I got in touch with an NGO in Hyderabad. Yeah. And what the NGO does is that um, they go into these urban villages yeah. in Hyderabad mm -hmm. and then they set up a little unit. Mm -hmm. You know, they take a little place on rent mm -hmm. and in that they will, you know, uh, put about 8 to 10 sewing machines mm -hmm. and then they invite women from that neighborhood area to come and learn how to 
uh, you know, uh, someone will learn how to stitch, someone will learn how to cut patterns, right. someone will learn how to make paper bags. Yeah. And uh, after three to six months of this um, this engagement and this training, that center actually becomes a full fledged production unit. Wow. And then the women are employed by the NGO, mm -hmm. and uh, whatever work the NGO gets, uh, you know, is then passed on to the unit to make. So it becomes a fully sustainable yeah. uh, unit yes. in their village where the women don't have to go outside for work. Right. Uh, they can stay there and you know uh, they can look after their children. Yes. They have the ease to move around. Yes. They can also work at home. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So uh, this was something that really touched me very deeply. And at that point of time, I was sure that I wanted to do this and I wanted to. Uh, be a part of this engagement. Amazing. This is so beautifully the, the way she has explained it is it seems so easy that you go there, you engage some women. But to bring that woman to that center is also a task. I would like to share a few uh, kind of uh, um, data here that how uh, far are we to achieve this kind of a gender equality where women have to really ask the household to come out if I can go to that center which yes. has just come down and uh, which would have been very easier for any men to just go uh, and do whatever that was. So the world is not on track actually to achieve the gender equality by 2030, we are way back. Uh, it says that uh, 300 years to end the child marriage and we are in 2024 and they are still child marriage happening and this is not an India uh, data, this is a world data given by UN. Okay. 286 years to close gaps in legal protection and remove discriminatory laws. So even the legal system, the judiciary is not in favor still of women. 140 years to achieve equal representation in leadership in the workplace. So women, uh, we find every year it is the girls who are becoming the toppers but that is where it ends. They even go to study in colleges which is Again, a meager girls, like out of 500 girls, it's only 100, 500 students in the college, it's probably 100 girls and 400 boys. And as they go to join the jobs, even there they are less. And as they have to climb the ladder for the leadership, it becomes even less. Absolutely. So, legislated gender quotas are effective to achieve equality in politics, women's representation in parliament is a 30.9 percent countries applying quotas and 21.2 countries without quotas. Nearly half of married women lack decision making power over their sexual and reproductive health and rights. One in five women, young women are married before their 18th birthday and this is worldwide data. So this is so alarming. So how can we just by giving them a little job also help them is what is important. We have to start somewhere. We just cannot be getting overwhelmed by the data that we have. No, that what can I do? How can I help them? We will talk about the practical tips also later. But to understand that how this one woman is able to bring about a little change in her own capacity for all of these women. Yes, Tuti. So, how is now your whole project making an impact? So, I think the first thing, uh, Monica Ji, was that I wanted to make sure that uh, that you know it is not something that I am doing for them. They are also doing for me. Yes. So, uh, the products that I kind of design and I draw and I envision, they are making it for me. So, yeah. you know, it is Absolutely. also uh, Absolutely. something. It, it's a reciprocal re relationship, yes. it's not one-sided. So, you know, I'm paying them fairly for it, but they're also doing something to help me build this business. Absolutely. So, if there is no differentiator in my business, it, it doesn't work. Right? So, they are helping me with that. And um, for, uh, for some time, we've also trained them on making sure that they look at the quality aspect of the product mm -hmm. that we are creating. Mm -hmm. you know? So, to make sure that they're, they're not... Um, getting away with something which is lower quality. Okay. So um, that was one thing. Now uh, at present, uh, so when I started, uh, uh, I was able to give them work, you know, off and on. Yeah. Now uh, I launched my website in 2020, uh, in March 2020, which was just like a few days before the pandemic hit. 
and uh, even through the pandemic i think uh, people because they were living at home full time and they became very conscious of how their home looks and you know things like that so uh, our uh, business grew yeah. and uh, today uh, post 4 years actually exactly almost 4 years later um I, we are able to give the ngo uh, give the little unit work enough to to uh, to fully sustain it very good you know very good. so rather than off and on we are now um, doing uh, production cycles which are completely our own very good so one entire unit is now dedicated to making curry by kriti products mm-hmm. and uh, last year i also worked with uh, two more ngos who were working on similar lines Uh, one in Bhopal and one in Howrah, and uh, again with them currently it is off and on work. Mm-hmm. But I am hoping that in this year we'll be able to also scale them. Wonderful. So this is how when you start even small, you can really like, scale it up. No, you because when your intention is pure and you're really work, wanting to work. So uh, the other day when I was attending one of the um, uh, you can say a training development course, and one of the speakers was saying a very beautiful thing. that if you want to win you can go and have lot of efforts but you may also lose but if you are bent on helping others win you will never lose <laughs> that's so beautiful <laughs> so that is what you are doing actually you are helping all the other women win <laughs> and that will help you to never lose <laughs> no, that so, is so nice of you thank yeah. you so much so this is going to be a really wonderful year i'm sure yeah. your fourth year and now that the new projects which you are having in different different cities will really uh, go further because you are really helping women to bring out their potential you are helping them uh, to becoming empowered to and one thing which has really come out from your uh, talk also i want to highlight here is that and she was talking about why is the women wanting to have that kind of an extra income or something is for the children So again, that is again a mindset which has been so ingrained in ourselves. No, we are not earning to probably buy a new dress for ourselves, or probably, and that may be a little more for the modern woman who is there. She may go on a vacation and she's earning well, but for those women folks who are in villages, it is all about their family. Also. as mahatma gandhi also said no if you are educating one woman you are helping her to educate the whole family absolutely so if she is helping that one woman she is helping the whole family so now we will talk about the practically how we can okay now that she is able to do so much for the women around her to bring about that kind of a gender equality and gender equality and decent work is not only about um, the women she is talking about but also about the whole uh, place around them so i just wanted to bring about a little few more facts here that gender equality is not only giving the right payment or giving the equal payment to her it is more on that we have sub targets also on there so i just wanted to just share those so target 1 says end discrimination against women and girls Next is end all violence against exploitation of women and girls. Eliminate forced marriages and genital mutilations. Value unpaid care and promote shared domestic responsibilities. Ensure full participation in leadership and decision making. A decision making not only in corporates but at home also. I feel. Universal access to reproductive health and rights. Equal rights to economic resources. property owners ownership and financial services promote empowerment of women through technology because now also we are seeing that if there is a choice in the family to give an ipad to the children the ipad goes to the boy i am not talking about uh, an urban family but of a middle class or a lower class family where the choice of technology will be still given to the boy because he is supposed to earn for the family right adopt and strengthen policies and enforceable legislation for gender equality so unless there are policies and laws we will not be able to enforce those and then we will not be able to have that kind of a gender equality which we are talking about today but what we are doing here is also give the right place for them to work give them the right opportunity 
and also give them the right remuneration for whatever they are doing. So how practically are we, uh, as a lay person uh, sitting at home, any woman, how can we also contribute? So I think uh, number one, what I uh, what I think is that uh, when a woman in the family earns, she also somehow, uh, you know, you talked about the leadership role in the family. And uh, when someone, uh, when a woman is contributing to the family uh, pot, so to say, uh, then somewhere I think she also gets the confidence yes. to, that she can stand up for herself or, or stand up for her rights, stand up for her children, that, uh, um, that she will not go through a marriage or go through a certain situation just like that. Yes. You know? Yes. So uh, just kind of identifying that. Uh, that there's a woman in my environment or there are these women in my environment who will um, be able to achieve more or will be able to stand up for themselves more if I can, uh, you know, somewhere contribute in my little way. I think so that is one tip is to kind of identify how we can empower a woman. Like is it, uh, if we have a maid coming at home, do yes. we have that half an hour in the day where we can kind of educate her yes. or her children or yes. uh, find her something which is uh, you know something else which is meaningful Correct. for her and um, is that a way we can contribute towards her livelihood building yeah. a decent livelihood for her so one of the uh, other things we do for you know for uh, our housekeeper is that we uh, we contribute to a PPF for her daughter yes uh, every year hmm. and, uh, and and because that is locked in no one can really go into that and pull the money out of that. So for 15 years that is locked in. Yeah. You know, so uh, that is something that we all can do. Yes, of course. course. And uh, if there is something about building a business, then we have to be very conscious about who we are working with. Right. Uh, we might be, uh, we might think that, okay, I also want to do a textile business or I also want to create clothes or something or, you know, launch something which is uh, women's wear or whatever, children's wear or something. But who are we sourcing from? Yeah, you know, if we are going to a factory who is giving us really low prices mm. or very cheap prices, then we have to be very conscious that what are the practices? Yes, are they exploiting some people? Correct. Are, Correct. Do they have child labor? Child labor. Yeah. You know, so those are things that we have to really keep our eyes and ears open to if we are uh, working with a third party. Also, and if they are also discriminating on the kind of uh, money they are giving to the to exactly, yeah. yeah. Are they paying equal, equal or not? Yes. Exactly. Yes. So, uh, I mean, I think payment, how much they are paying is very, is difficult to know. Mm -hmm. But uh, just by how much they are asking you to pay or how much they want your business mm -hmm. and how much are they willing to lower their costs, mm -hmm. you know, is something you can really identify that if someone is really negotiating hard, mm -hmm. it is obviously going out from someone else's pocket. Right. You know, right. it's not going out from his pocket. Yes. At the end of the day, he's also making some... some Profits, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. So, who are the people who are uh, losing out? It's probably the workers, you know, and it could be men, women, both. Yeah, right, right, absolutely. So, gender equality doesn't mean that we are only wanting to have equality for women. Again, yeah. coming back to that, it is also the men sometimes are not getting the fair share. So, we also voice for them. And also we can add to how do we can educate especially uh, the maids who are coming to our house about their rights, uh, about their opportunities which they are getting. Also about schemes that the government launched. That is not, launched, not a schemes you know? the government launches. Yes. They are unaware of those. So as educated persons we can really tell them about all those schemes. They can avail uh, in the Schemes city. and also insurance for medical yes. and all. And basic things to how to deposit the money in the bank and bring out and to have their own uh, 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 like accounts in the bank, exactly. so that is also not done by so many of them. So these are the practical things which we can help uh, to really bring our women around us to that level that they are feeling little more sufficient in their own lives. <laughs> and when a mother is feeling sufficient, she will be able to encourage the daughter as well. Absolutely. So, uh, so many good things we have spoken. I would like to have a last message from today. <laughs> So I think uh, sustainability is a slow everyday process and uh, we have to make sure that uh, you know amongst all of us there are 17 sustainable development goals that the UN has set. So if we can just go back and read what those seven are, uh, 17 are and maybe try and align ourselves with just one of them, we can all contribute towards this uh, 2030 goal of the yes. UN. And um, 
I think uh, you know we are all doing something in our daily lives, reducing plastic, recycling, and all. But what else mm-hmm. can we do? Is mm-hmm. there something else that we can do? You know, like there's something about clean energy. Are we in a position to uh, to kind of um, use solar panels yeah. in our houses? Yes. Right. You know, uh, those of us who are living in a in a villa community or something where these are more accessible. Mm-hmm. So clean energy or something else. Yes. And what we are wearing, like how we are wearing, because she's in from textiles. So what are we wearing? Are we yeah, wearing? Are we sin- conscious about what, what we are wearing? wearing? Like are we wearing that synthetic stuff, which is little cheaper, or we are wearing something which is made out of some sustainable material, and we are going to uh, pay a little more price for that because it is going to be a perishable thing, a biodegradable uh, material. But I want to tell you, Monica Ji, that anything that is handmade, that is. You know, hand loom or hand craft, it will last longer. Yeah. So yeah, you know, last longer than something that we buy out of an everyday fast fashion brand Correct. like Zara or H H&M. and M. Correct. Actually, actually, and we are also, and that is biodegradable. That is what. So it is not a burden on the planet. That is what we have to understand. It. The the less the burden on the planet, the more happy and more harmonious we can live. Also. So it was really wonderful to have a lot of insights from you today. Thank and you so much. It was so wonderful to have you on this Bunyad talk show. And anybody who is listening to this and gets a uh, little resonated with all of what we have spoken, and you want to share your views regarding any sustainable thing that you are doing, you are most welcome. You can connect with me, and I will reach out, and you can be my next guest. So thank you so much for listening, and have a good day. Thank you so much. Namaste. <laughs>